devotion for Wednesday, December 2nd. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our reading for today continues in the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1, verses 14 to 18. The Word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Have you ever wondered what God looks like? Is he an old man with white hair and a full beard, wearing a white robe, sitting on a throne with a crown on his head? Is he a cloud with rays of light beaming forth? Is he lightning and thunder? We wonder because we have not seen God. John tells us no one has ever seen God. But there is a but. But God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. The Word became flesh. The Word, the one who is God, who is life, who is light, took on human flesh. He became a man and lived on earth for a while. And people saw him. If you and I had been in Bethlehem when Jesus was born, we would have heard the real cry of a newborn baby we would have seen Mary take his real fingers, tiny as they were, in her hands and count them as mothers do. During Advent, our prayer is that our Lord Jesus would be near us. And he can be because he is real. He is truly God and he is truly man, united in one person, Jesus Christ. He was born after John the Baptist. We know that Jesus was about three months younger than John. And yet, at the same time, he was before John, because he is eternal God. Yes, if we had been in Galilee during Jesus' life, we would have heard his real voice teaching, rebuking, forgiving, and encouraging. And we would have seen his perfect life as he submitted to and obeyed this law that came from Moses, the Old Testament covenant that God expected his people, demanded that his people obey. Jesus did not come to abolish God's law, but to fulfill it, to keep it, because you and I can't. If you and I had been on Mount Calvary 
at his crucifixion, we would have seen real nails go into his hands and feet, the same hands and feet that Mary held. We would have seen real blood flow as God the Father poured out his righteous wrath against sin and punished his son Jesus in our place. Because Jesus came to be a substitute for us and pay the punishment for our sins. If you and I had been in the upper room three days later, we would have seen his real body alive. This is where we, together with his disciples, truly see his glory in his triumph over sin and death in the victory that he has won for us in the salvation that he gives us as a free gift of his love. Do you want to see God? Then look to Jesus. As Jesus draws near to you in the gospel message, you will see God in his full grace. You will know God in, the, in his full truth. You will see your Savior. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for taking on human flesh in order to be our Savior. Thank you for making known to us God's grace and truth. Keep our eyes fixed on you until we see your full glory in heaven. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me for